In the previous video, we introduced the concept of binary numbers and how to represent them. And we also showed how we can convert decimal numbers to binary numbers and vice versa using Python. Now in this video, we're going to discuss Boolean logic, which is the algebra we use to operate on binary numbers. So if you think of decimal numbers, there we use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on to manipulate those numbers. Well, Boolean logic is the set of operations that we use to manipulate binary numbers. So there are three basic Boolean operations. The first one is negation, which acts only on one bit. We usually refer to it as the not operation. So if we have a bit A, it's negation, which we represent with a bar on top of our uh, variable is basically the opposite of whatever we have stored in our bit A. So if A is zero, our negation is one. If A is one, our negation is zero. The second operation is conjunction, which we call the OR operation. And this acts on two bits. So if we have bit A and bit B, the OR between these two, which we represent with this V symbol, is basically a one if either A or B is a one. So if we have all possible combinations, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, our OR operation is one whenever either of the two variables A or B are one. So in this first case, they're both zero, so we get zero. And then here we have B is one, so this is one, then A is one, so one, and then both are one, so again, one. And the third operation, is this junction or the AND operation, which as the name represents, it's equal to one when both A and B are one. So the truth table for that will give us zero, 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 one, because only in this last case, both A and B are one. And the symbol that we use for this operation is the inverted version of what we have for the OR. So it's this little wedge symbol. Now, the idea of having these three basic operations is that then we can combine them to get other outcomes that we want. So let's take a look at an example. So let's consider again the variables A and B and all their possible combinations. So let's say we want to find A and not B, not A and B, and then the OR of these two. So let's say A and not B, or not a and b. So for this first expression, we know that the and is only one when both of its inputs are one. So this will only be one when a is one and b is zero. And then the same for not a and b. So it will be one only when a is zero and b is one. And then if we take the or of these two expressions, well, we know the or is one whenever either of its inputs is one. So we're going to get zero, one, one, zero. Now this operation is important enough that it has its own name and its own symbol. So we call this the exclusive or. So A exclusive or B, which we're going to actually call X or for short, is equal to this expression we have here with its corresponding truth table. And is the equivalent of addition with binary numbers. So if we were to take A and B to be, let's say, decimal numbers instead of binary numbers, A plus B for this truth table, well, we get 0, 1, 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So the XOR operation is actually giving us 0, 1, 1, 0. Why? Well, because in binary, 2 is actually 1, 0. But the, this output is a single bit output. So we only have the least significant bit of that addition. Another way to represent this XOR is by saying that A XOR B is the same as A plus B, where this plus is the addition as if A and B were decimal numbers, modulo two. And all this modulo two means is that we are taking that output of the addition of a plus b, dividing it by two and taking the remainder. Now this example with the XOR is only for two bits, 
But the idea of combining these basic Boolean operations generalizes for a larger number of bits, of course. So if you go to the course website, uh, learnquantum.io, and go into the bits and digital circuits section, there you can find an example where we show a truth table for uh, three bits. Now, performing these basic Boolean operations in Python can be a bit tricky if we're not careful. And that is because, as we mentioned before, Python doesn't have a specific type for binary numbers. So we have to use decimal numbers to perform these operations. So let's take a look and see what I mean by this. So let's consider first the AND operation, which in Python we can perform using this ampersand symbol. So if we take, for example, 0 and 0, we get 0 as expected. And then we can see that for the values of a single bit, we get the expected results. But what if we want to do a bit by bit an operation in a larger binary number? So let's say the number 1010 and the number 1111. So we know that the AND operation should give us 1 only when both bits are 1. So we would expect to get as a result the exact same number we have here. And what do we get? Well, we get a different number because if you recall, these are decimal numbers, these are not binary numbers. So we might say, okay, well, what we need to do is remember that we can express binary numbers by using this prefix of 0b. So if we do that, then we get 10. Well, this is indeed the correct answer because we're again printing the decimal value of the operation we perform here. If we were to convert this back to a binary number, we will see that we will get the right answer, which is 1010, 0, 0, which is 10 in decimal. So to perform Boolean operations in Python, we need to make sure that we're using the 0b prefix. And then if we want to get the binary string corresponding to the answer, we have to convert it back. Now we can do the exact same thing for the OR operation, but instead of an ampersand symbol, we use this vertical bar, and that gives us, as expected, uh, the 1111 result because the OR is always a 1 when either of the bits is 1. So if we were to change this to 0, then we'll get 11110. Python also has a symbol for the exclusive OR, which is this caret symbol. Now, this might be confusing because we use that wedge symbol to represent the AND operation. But in Python, this is what they decided to go with. So in this particular case, the XOR should give us zero whenever the bits are equal to each other, it should give us one when they're different. Here we see that for the first bit, we get a zero because they're equal. Then we get another zero because they're equal. Then we get a one because they're different. And then if you recall, here we should have a zero, but in Python, if you have a zero to the left, it just omits it from uh, displaying it. Now you might wonder, well, how do I get a NOT operation? Let's say I just want to invert all my bits. Now, unfortunately in Python, there is not a predetermined function that allows you to, to do that. However, we can cheat. If you recall, if we do the XOR operation between let's say zero and one, well, because these two bits are different, we're gonna get one. So we can think of this as our input and then this just as a mask. And if we were to change our input to one, then we get a zero. So whenever we perform an XOR of any bit with one, we're going to invert that bit. So to negate a string, what we can do is perform the XOR operation with a string of ones. So if we do this, we can see here that we get the negation of this. So this is zero, then we get one, this is one and we get zero and this is zero we get one and then for the last bit we had one and then because it's missing we get a zero so let's change that to zero to see that we also get a one there so performing an xor operation of some number with a string of ones is going to give us the bitwise negation of that number now one thing we need to be super careful about is that in python there's also these two functions and and or, which are actually reserved for conditionals. So we don't want to do something like performing 
this type of operation between two bit strings because it can have some unintended results. So just keep in mind that we need to use the ampersand, vertical bar, and caret symbols when we want to perform bitwise operations on binary numbers. Now, an alternative way of representing Boolean expressions, like for example, the one we have here for the XOR, is by the use of digital circuits. Now, digital circuits are valuable because they are a um, visual representation of these expressions that it is closer in terms of how things get implemented in hardware. So these Boolean operations are what we use to implement the logic that is the backbone for mother computers. So each of our Boolean operations, so our NOT, AND, and OR, have a corresponding circuit diagram representation. So for the NOT, we represent it with this little triangle with a circle in the front. Then this is the symbol for the AND operation. And this is the symbol for the OR operation. And just like with Boolean expressions, we can use these three building blocks to construct circuits that represent any type of expression. So we could take as an example the XOR and draw a circuit diagram for that, which we know is the negation of an input A and with a B, and then the negation of B and with A, and then the output of those two expressions goes to an OR. So this will be the diagram representation of the XOR. Now again, because the XOR is such a common expression, it also has its own circuit diagram symbol. Now, digital circuit diagrams can serve as a good abstract tool to analyze logical operations, but as we said before, they can also be mapped to a physical implementation in hardware, for example, using uh, electrical circuits. So each of these different gates has a corresponding implementation using transistors, for example, and um, then they can be used to build all of the modern computing systems we have today. So I think that's it for this video. In the next one, we'll start discussing some of the more relevant concepts related to quantum computing. So we'll discuss uh, reversible computing, which is at the core of what makes quantum circuits, but it can also be implemented using classical circuits. So we'll start with the simpler version of reversible circuits and then go from there. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.